which is A. Now, this may not work, okay? This may not be the way we want to go. Uh, 3 plus 4x squared minus 2x cubed minus f of a, which is 3 minus 4a squared plus 2a cubed, all over x minus a. Now, I did the f of a on the right here. I already distributed the minus sign through. That's critical. Are you all okay with that up to there? The only good thing that happens is the threes cancel, right? Now, when you look at this limit, you can kind of think a little bit ahead as to what it is that you are trying to get to cancel. Like, what is it that we want to cancel here? We want to get an x minus a, don't we? Don't we want an x minus a to cancel? Yes? Not an h, but the whole thing, x minus a. So I think what I'll do is I'll put the 4x squared minus 4a squared next to each other, and then I'll do minus 2x cubed plus 2a cubed. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I know that the 4x squared minus 4a squared I can pull a 4 out of each of those, and I'll be left with a difference of squares. And on the other one, I could pull a negative 2 out of both of those, and I'll be left with a difference of cubes. How do I know that? So I've been doing this for way too long. Right? How do you know that? Because you're taking the class, and you've got to try something. You've got to just keep trying and working your algebra until you get to it. So you agree with that? Any questions? Limit, x goes to a, four times, difference of squares, x plus a, x minus a. Minus two times, what is the formula for difference of cubes? This will turn, this turn to x minus a, x squared, plus xa plus a squared. So you need to somehow either know that or go find it somewhere. Are you all right with that? This is this. This is this. Now, what do both the yellow part, top left and top right, have in common? They have both have an x minus a. So I can pull the x minus a out here it comes. I'll be left with a 4 times x plus a minus a 2 times x squared plus xa plus a squared. Close my bracket. All of it over x minus a. Y'all see what happened there? That the, the green parts there got pulled out in front because they both had it. And now they cancel. And that's all I was wanting because now I should be able to take a limit. So here it is. I'm real bad about leaving all my equal signs off. I apologize. I should have equals in front of all this. All right, so now what am I going to do to take this limit? Plug in A for all my X's, right? So I'll have 4, I'll have A plus A, minus 2, A squared plus A squared again plus A squared again, which is 4A, four, sorry, that's not 4A squared, that's, that's 2A, so how about 8A? Right, a plus A is 2A, and then times 4, so 8A minus, let's see, these three together gives me 3A squareds, 
and then times negative 2, so negative 6 a squared. That's the slope of the tangent line at A. Now, I think this problem helps illustrate the power of what we've done in, the, in section 2.3. If you take this problem in section 2.3 and say find its derivative, with, you don't have to use the limit anymore. The derivative of 3 is 0. The derivative of this is what? 8x. And derivative of this is negative 6x squared, which is the same thing we just got. 8a minus 6, 8a minus 6a squared. We have 8x minus 6x squared. On the test, I will tell you if I want the if I want you to use the limit definition, I will say use the definition of the derivative to find blah. If I do not say it you can use this. But I would check your answer. Like if I were doing this on a test and I got 8a minus 6a squared, I would check by doing the derivative using the rule. They should be the same. I mean, of course, a here and x up there, but does that, you can, you, can you take the problem the rest of the way? I mean, now it's just plugging in points to figure out your tangent, right? Yes or no? You want me to we're good? Okay. You can use either of those limits. Yep. You could have used that, you know, because you, you said you used this one. That's the one you used, so that's the one I used. The other one should work the same. I mean, it should work out, but I'm actually thinking the other one might have been harder. What's that? Is it? Yeah, so just depends. Okay. All right, I think that's good for, wow, have we already been here for almost 40 minutes? Holy shit. Time flies when you're having fun, right? All right, so we have now these basic rules from last class, right? And we're going to start 2.4 now. Two point four is the product and the quotient rules. These are extremely powerful rules, all right? So far, we know what to do if we have, you know, like, let's see. Let me write down the things we should be able to do right now before this section starts. If I say take the, the function four and take its derivative. That's a constant, right? What's the derivative of 4? 0, OK? If I say take the derivative of 3x, what's the derivative of that? Just 3. If I say what's the derivative of 5x, oh, that's not x, 5x to the 7th, you say 35x to the 6th. If I say what's the derivative of x squared plus x plus 2, that would be 2x plus 1, right? So we can handle individual powers of x. We can handle adding things together. We just do them piece by piece. But what about if we have a product, two things being multiplied together, two functions being multiplied together? What is the derivative of that? And that's where we get the product rule from. So here's where we will begin. As an example, let's let y be equal to sine x. Uh, you know what? Hold on. Let's do it this way. x sine x. So you have to first see that you have a product. Right? I'm going to put it there in a blue dot. Normally, that dot isn't written there. x in front of sine x would, be, would mean multiplication. Now, life would be real good, don't write this down, okay? Life would be good and calculus would be easy if the answer were 1 times cosine x. What did I do there to get 1 times cosine x? I just did the derivative of each one, right? I said, oh, okay, look, derivative of x is 1, derivative of sine x is cosine x. 
That's not the way it works. Okay? It's not the way it works. What you have to do in order to figure out the derivative of a product is apply the product rule. And I'm going to prove the product rule and then we'll use it, all right? So this is wrong. So proof of the product rule. Okay, let y be equal to f of x times g of x. So I have two functions there, right, being multiplied. I would like to know, I want to know what y prime is. Right? That's what I want to know. What's the derivative of y? What is the derivative of a product? Well, according to the definition, y prime is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of, now this is where you have to be a little careful. It's supposed to be like f of x plus h minus f of x over h. But see, here we have a product, right? So it's not f of x plus h, it's f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus f of x times g of x all over h. Do you agree with that? I mean, or does that make sense to you that that's what the limit definition of the derivative of a product is? No questions? No one disagrees? Now, what I'm going to show you right now is, is one of the first times that this is going to happen to you in a math class. A, a lot of times, we always like to multiply things by 1, right? We've always loved to come in and take some fraction and multiply by 1. And we pick this nice thing, it's something over itself, right? That is a pretty high level of thought to do that, to come in with something like a conjugate top and bottom. That, that requires a certain level of thought. But there's an even higher level of thought that takes advantage of the idea that next to everything is a plus zero. So let me show you what I mean. So as you go on, some of you who are going to go on do some, you know, more math. Recognizing that sitting next to everything is a hidden zero is a pretty high level thought. Plus zero minus f of x times g of x. So everyone agrees with that statement? I haven't changed the problem at all. f of x plus g of x plus nothing minus f, f of x times g of x is the same exact thing as the line before. Yeah? That's all right? Okay, now, that zero that I pick can be any, any, any way I want to write zero, right? There's infinitely many ways you can write zero. Right, I could write 2 minus 2, that's 0, isn't it? I could write 3 minus 3, that's 0. So look at how I'm going to choose my 0. And it's pretty damn clever. Do you agree that what I put in there is zero? The red is still zero? I mean, take f of x times g of x plus h, multiply